What is going on, everybody? <laughs> Brent Abel here, GoBallHunting.com. That dude over there, the great Jeff Jacklich. And we are going to talk about the topspin forehand today in a little bit different light than probably what you've been taught, probably what you see on uh, the interwebs out there. And uh, so, guys, hang on, hang in there with us for this episode of the Global Hunting Podcast because we want to change your mindset of what to do with your topspin forehand. So the big question is this, how are tennis players like us who never played in the tour, weren't incredible juniors, or maybe got a late start to the game, how do we consistently compete at our highest skill level without having to grind through endless hours of encore practice time and still be in the hunt for victory match after match? That is the question, and Gold Ball Hunting gives you the answers by helping you eliminate your skill level range so that you build a strong foundation of confidence. My name is Brent Abel, and along with my biz partner, Jeff Jacklich, welcome to Gold Ball Hunting. Jeffrey, my man, what is going on over there today in Moraga, California? Bright and early. Gosh, it's only 725, and yeah, you look like you've shaved like all over today. From... Feeling fast today. Yeah. Feeling fast. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm fueling up right now. Indian Wells, yeah. the tennis guard, man. Well... Look, um, I'm getting pumped. I just, you know, we're, we're still here in Steamboat. We'll be here, today's Thursday, October 24. We'll be here until next Monday, uh, the 28th. And then we're, it takes us two days to get back. We'll stay in the the uh, garden town, the garden city of Elko, Nevada, on our way back uh, at the Best yeah. Western there. The Best Western, they got a little pet-friendly friend, place there. But, um, so we'll be back on Tuesday, the 29th. And I'll be there for the rest of the week. And then I'm going to head down the desert uh on either the second or third uh to actually get back into actually hitting some tennis balls what a concept yeah so i'm looking forward to that and then you and i got uh we got a gold ball hunting uh i'm not sure how we what what we call this thing that we do at tournaments but we'll have to come up with some <laughs> name but guys we're going to have a big old goldballhunting.com tent and we'll be doing some interviews and if you're in the desert uh, the week of, I can't remember the new, it was that, was that like the third week? It's, it's, it's the week before Thanksgiving, right? Uh, it is, uh, this, I think the tournament, the grass courts start the 17th and run through the 24th. Okay. So Thanksgiving's pretty late this year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Thanksgiving's the following week. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, it's a week before Thanksgiving. We'll be at the Mission Hills Country Club. There's the national 60 and 75 grass court men's down there that will be, we got a tent, and if you guys are in the desert, we'd love to have you come by and say, what's up, boys? And uh, introduce yourself. That, that'd be fun. And uh, look, you know, if you're, if you're, maybe if you're even in the, the tournament, let's get together and see, uh, see if we can't get yeah. a nugget or two about an upcoming opponent and, uh, and get to the W. Um, Jeff, I want to talk about, yesterday I put an email out to, uh, uh, my email lists, web tennis, and also gold ball hunting. And I just said, what's up with your forehand? Or maybe what's not up with your forehand, with your topspin forehand, right? And everything that came back was amazing. I mean, I got dozens and dozens of, of emails back, which, which I love, because uh, it certainly helps us better understand how they're right. thinking, right? And I think I asked two things. Number one is, you know, what are you just not happy with? And... Um, you know, about it. Sort of what's the result that you're getting that you don't like? And then the other thing, is there anything that you're, that, that you just don't quite get yet about the top spin forehand? And so there was not one response that had anything to do with uh, tactics or strategy in terms of, of how do I, well, Brent, how do I use my top spin forehand strategically to set me up to uh, kind of take advantage of the point? And it was all about it was all about technique. It was well, I don't have the right technique to get more power, to get more clearance, to get more spin, to get a higher quality of this, a higher quality of that. It was literally I, look, maybe that's our fault, maybe that's my fault for not hammering home. You don't need advanced technique to develop a topspin forehand that can strategically put you in charge of the point. Unless you're on super defense 
And from there, why not just slide a, you know, a slice forehand back and get back in the court? But right. I think there's this big, huge misconception out there, Jeff, that the way that you win more points, more games, more sets, more matches, is by upgrading the quality of the spin, upgrading the quality of the power, and all this stuff about technique as opposed to, well, how do you use a, I mean, look, You've seen my forehand. It's nothing to write home about. It's really average. And yet, I use it strategically now, um, not only as a rally ball, but uh, also as an approach shot in terms of that high, deep looper that bounces up to the guy's backhand. 98% of the guys back up. Okay, I'm coming in. Thank you. And that, that approach looper... I mean, you can you can see the Wilson turning. <laughs> it's turning, but right, <laughs> but it's not it's not it's not, right? it's not violent. No, and it's certainly I'm not changing the shape of the ball from round to you know egg oh, shape to where it's right. Yeah. So it's, it's creating its own gravitational pull, right? That's it's right. Spinning so fast. <laughs> well, it's it's maybe it's 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 depending on the gravitational yeah. pull. Um, so anyway, I just want to kind of kick that around today and see if we can't help players change their minds in terms of stop thinking so much technically about your top spin forehand and start thinking way more about, well, how could you use it to set up your next shot? Because I think, right. I, I think, I think when guys think about it technique wise, it's thinking like, well, this is a one and done. I can hit it in such a way with so much technique, it ain't coming back. Well, guess what? Lots of times it's not coming back because it's either in the bottom of the net or it's sailing deep. Right. So you're getting right. what you're you're getting what you're hoping for. <laughs> yeah, I want to get out of the point. Yeah. Ta-da. There you go. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think you know it is. I think it is a mis uh, misunderstood kind of aspect of the game, um, especially at this point. And and the assumption is is that everybody in pro tennis hits a heavy topspin ball. I don't know. What's that guy right now who's really trending heavily right now? Medvedev? Right. His yeah. forehand? Yeah. Uh, last time I checked, it's pretty flat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, let's and, see. And, and on saying, the women's side, Sharapova. Her forehand's been this just cannon of a flat forehand, yeah. along with a lot of other women right now. Right. It's not this heavy. They hit a lot of flat, heavy balls. Well, let's, you know? so, yeah, one, so I just want to say that first. Is that is but that? Let's define that, flat. Let's define flat. Flat has upspin. Right. The ball is actually rotating up as it leaves your racket and coming right. back down. So we can call it upspin. I got that from Jim McLennan. We can call it topspin. It doesn't matter. And I see that the sun's peeking over the top here, and I'm there starting to go. get the. So you go ahead and yeah, because I shut the blinds here. Yeah. So. Um, Anyway, the point point being is that it's not it's not what is considered now, let's say, you know, a heavy top spin ball or let's say a violent top spin ball. Um, and so I think that kind of part of that misunderstanding that I I need to have this highly accelerated top spin ball in order to compete is just is just a I think a complete misunderstanding of of the nature of what wins tennis matches. No question. Um, and what's frustrating for me, yeah, and I know, so, I know, so tactically and, is really, well, I was just going to say, I, you know, what's frustrating for, for both of us is to go on YouTube or go on Facebook and see, and see coaches or teaching pros. And they're sitting there filming their student. Could be a junior, could it be, could be an adult. And all they're showing us is, is look at the technique. And I'm just scratching right. my head, going, "Well, okay, but <laughs> you got a timeout. Could you? You got this. You got this white line right there right across here. your mouth. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here, let's see if I can get out of this thing a little bit. Is this any better? Yeah. There you go. Oh, there you go. There yeah. You go. yeah. Um, it's like, it's, but it just it just frustrates the crap out of me that that I don't see enough videos going. We're using this 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 topspin forehand as. Um, strategically and it's like it's like they're mimicking I, I don't mind if guys are drilling i mean mr stowe did that with me he would mimic he would mimic match play situations that were pretty common well you know brent lots of times you're going to get a short ball over here to, here here to your forehand here's what you do 
here's where you play it and here's where you move to next. Well, you know, you, you watch all these, all these videos and they're all about, here's how to hit the ball. Well, okay, but where do you move to next? And there's no, there's no, there's nothing other than right. look how hard I've got my student hitting this topspin forehand. Right. Oh God, give me a needle and stick it in my eye and, and just let me just. You know. <laughs> well, you know, the other, the other, the, the, you know, a, a, a specific aspect of that scenario too, is that, you know, coming in, you know, off the forehand and we're going to, we're going to pound this, this shorter forehand is, is that you see it, you know, again, in the highlight reels or not even in the highlight reels sometimes. Cause it's, it's so, it, it's so, it happens so often, but the diff, the degree of difficulty of picking up a ball that is a foot, a foot and a half off the court, that is somewhere around the service line, and getting that ball up and down with a heavy topspin is no easy task. Oh, it's, it's that when, when somebody when somebody snaps that off, I know how difficult that is to do that, and it is like, oh, okay. I got to find out, does this guy own that? Cause that could be, that could cause some problems for me today. Cause I really like laying that ball in there low like that. Cause I know how difficult the production of that shot is. Right. 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 Yet we see it, you know, in the highlight reels and things like that. And, and it looks so common, but again, we're talking about these elite athletes at the height of their athleticism <laughs> that, that have this, you know, stroke technique and stroke production that that is just so out there, and it's marvelous to watch. But it but it doesn't necessarily translate um, to more wins for senior nope. players. Absolutely, right. For the rest of us. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. So, so I think that part of this whole discussion is just a it's an it's an it's like a blind spot. No one takes into account the the kind of like it's kind of like a diving or or gymnastics. The degree of difficulty of <laughs> You the know. Russian judge. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, so, so anyway, that that aspect of it as well. And so, I think what happens is 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 the the reality of how do I inflict pain from this position, and then where do I go next um, becomes lost in translation because the focus is on this, you know, doing doing this, yeah. you know, this well, highly technical. And that's, and, and, and that's it. And that's it. It's just it's just highly technical. And so look, 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 guys, if you want to win more, there's there's the I mean, I, I would sit in front of you and or stand in front of you and ask you, do you want to win more tennis matches? And if you go, well, of course. Well, OK, then what you're doing right now in terms of thinking of the topspin forehand, that the way you win more matches is with highly technical stuff. Is right. you're 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 actually gonna gonna continue on on the downward path because the more you try to get better technique, the tougher it becomes. The more un unforced errors you make, the shorter that ball lands because you're thinking, well, I got to get more sp spin. The ball jumps right. off the racket sooner. It just dives, uh, or you try to muscle it, and there's there's no power and there's no. So look, my point to our point today. <laughs> Average topspin forehand technique, which could mean a standard Eastern forehand grip, which could mean not a need to go at Rafa-like revolutions, right? Which could mean that, that average revolutions will give you plenty of margin and will actually bring the ball back down uh, safely inside the court, but will also not tear up your body. And you'll actually start thinking, well, how do I use this thing? How do I use it strategically? How do I right. set this up for what this guy doesn't like? It's like everyone's out there going, well, if I hit the super high quality topspin forehand, it doesn't matter who's over there. It doesn't matter. I can go ahead and just right. nail it over there against <laughs> anybody. Um, you know, reality alert here, man. No, you can't. It's just, it's just not how the game is played. So... Start thinking in terms of how to strategically use an average topspin forehand and that doesn't give that guy any kind of, or that gal, any kind of advantage over there. And where should you move to next on the court, depending on where you've hit that forehand? And 
We've got we've got yeah. lots of we've got lots of answers to that question for you. <laughs> right. Because the two the two things are are they are synonymous with each other. And that is I've hit the ball to a target over there and am I aware of how much or how little pain I've inflicted? With without that as part of the equation, there is no strategy. There is no being able to make adjustments, decisions on the fly to, and, and make corrections or not corrections, but adjustments, um, in the, at the moment tactic <laughs> right. rather than this, rather than the hitting and waiting to see how much damage I inflicted ultimately. And so, Oh, now he's hit a short ball. Oh, well that's great. But you know, you're three feet behind the baseline right now. So now it looks like a ball that I'm struggling to get to as opposed to monitoring that like how much pain I've inflicted. I can see, okay, now he's really stretched. Maybe I should start cheating the court a little bit. I mean, all that. So anyway, I think, I think those two things get lost in translation because they, they're not actually. Well, look, I mean, it's just know, that there, there's together. just so much, there's so much emphasis, not only when we're watching tennis channel, but you know, look, come on, let's, let's be honest. Um, trying to help students perfect technique is, is the best annuity in the world. I mean, yeah. let's let's be honest. I mean, and and, it's, and look, it's it's kind of a. I'm going to say it because I don't care. Um, it's <laughs> it's the lazy way of teaching tennis because it's I would it's, agree. it's it's much easier to sit there, grind through technique, and you know that the student's never going to get it. I mean, they'll, you know, we're talking about senior players, right? And so there comes there comes a ceiling as to how how well they can actually right. use that technique in a match where they don't, right. where they don't, you know, well, make, make a boatload okay. of unforced error. So here's a reality check, right? And Give that is me. you're out there, you, you've come out to the court to take your, to take your hour lesson. And you notice that the junior high performance kids are over on the next two courts. And, and that kid that you've seen at the club for the last four years who has a lot of talent, great athlete, and now he's 15, 16, and he is just crushing the ball. What we tend to forget is, you know, that kid has been on that court every day for the last five years. Right. Honing right. That, that technique and that skill, which is why now at, at five years later, yes, he should be crushing it by now. Right. So he's but, 15 years old. He's now crushing it with this semi to full Western forehand. And he's not doing the second part, which is where do you want to move to in, right. you know, next? And he's, and he's struggling in his age group. He's struggling in his age group. <laughs> and now he's actually been offered, now let's call him 17. He's been offered a D2 opportunity to play in the team. He goes over there. And by his sophomore year, he just goes, this is way too hard. Way too hard to play the game like this. It's no fun. What else is out there? Ah, that that golf looks like way more fun than right. than grinding <laughs> through this garbage. And you know what? The next thing you know is the kid gives up tennis, and maybe when he's forty or forty-five or fifty, he goes, "Well, maybe I should go back to tennis." I mean, right. So I don't know. We quickly got off track with well, that one. I think I think the point I was trying to make is that is that understand the 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 mind-numbing repetition it takes whether it's on the court or off the court meditation shadow stroking and and um rehearsing the mind-numbing repetition it takes to actually redesign technique you know reformat it rebuild it and how many hours in the day do you have to dedicate to it yeah you know, I mean, that, that's it's just a simple equation yeah it doesn't happen by magic it doesn't happen by doing it you know, in a, in a drill for 20 minutes once a week. And then, and then you're, and then you're practicing the rest of the week playing sets. That's just the harsh reality of it. Right. I mean, yeah. sorry. Well, look, <laughs> I would tell you guys, if, if you're frustrated with, with just grinding through another week of, uh, of stroke technique, trying to get it better, uh, let's do this. Let's jump on a free private coaching call. And because my bet is that if you've spent that much time and you're not getting the results you want, if we were to back off the technique, pare away some of the stuff that you actually don't need and change your mindset, let's, let's put you into a little different opportunity 
in terms of rather than thinking just technique, let's start thinking strategically and tactically about how to use your forehand, your minimalist forehand, to help you win more. If that's what you want to do, if you want to win more singles or doubles, then um, then that's our advice in terms yeah. in, in terms of how to start doing that. Look, guys, if you want to jump on a free private coaching call, just the three of us, you, me, and Jeff, go over to goldballhunting.com. Drop in your first name and email address, click the button, and you'll get access to our online calendar scheduler where you can pick a date and time that works best for you. If you're already on our email list, any email you get from us has got a a link in there that will take you to that calendar scheduler as well. Jeffrey, what do we want to find folks to do right now? Like us, share us, please subscribe, let us know what you think down below. iTunes, Stitcher, rate and review, goldballhoney.com. Spread the word. <laughs> Spread the word. Guys, get out there today. Man, what a day here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. This is going to be epic. This is going to be like, <laughs> wow. So, um, guys, get out there. Help someone else have a great day. Jeff, we're doing this again tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs>